Tech Biology TCP. I'm Mr. Wilson from TCP Academy, and today we're looking at the May June 2024 Agricultural Science uh, Paper 2. We're going to be looking at question number four. I would have done question number six, which actually looked at beekeeping. Man, if you ask me that beekeeping question was a little bit, you know, a little bit up there uh, for some persons. Other persons probably would have uh, found it a little easier. But for the greater part, I think most persons might have seen it as being difficult. So what are we going to be doing today? So it says here, figure one shows a diagram of a typical plant cell. Nicely, it looks like a plant cell, a rigid wall, cell wall, mitochondria, chloroplast, all those things are pronounced. But then there comes this part of a cell that says X. A lot of persons are going to be saying that that's the nucleus. I am very sorry. It is not. The entire envelope there would have been the nucleus. And the nucleus is surrounded by the nuclear membrane. However, inside the nucleus, that area there is called the nucleolus. So our first question there was to state the name of a part labeled X. And of course, it's a nucleolus. Our second question, state the main function of a part labeled X. Um, it manufactures cells, cell protein um, producing structure. And of course, ribosome, that is what it does. Now, if you were supposed to ask what's the main function of a nucleus, it pretty much stores DNA or genetic information for which we use in cell division. Let's look at the other question. State the type of cell division that occurs in the reproductive organ of a plant or reproductive organ in plants. Now remember there are two types of cell division. Cell divisions are going to be taking place either by mitosis or meiosis. When it's mitosis, we're going to have the exact number of chromosomes being transferred to the offspring from the parent and in so doing what we tend to have is that this mitosis takes place in what we refer to as somatic cells that's a regular body cells the other type of cell division which we pretty much pass on off chromosome number is called meiosis and this only takes place in the reproductive cells so here your answer is going to be meiosis moving on this question is a genetic question and I don't know how many persons, if you have not done agri or bio or one of those um, courses that offer these genetic crosses, you might be struggling here. So let me explain very quickly what is happening. Now, many thin skin tropical crops cannot be easily exported because they are damaged during handling and shipping. Jamaicans can speak about the Otaiti apple. I don't think it can trans be can transported to anywhere more than the market here in Jamaica. Because before it reaches where, it get, where it's going to go, of course, it's going to be damaged. For the greater part, that's what I've observed. As a result, the Regional Agricultural Research and Development Institute has been working with farmers to develop a new variety of hot pepper for export. The plant breeders cross a purebred, look at that, purebred, thick skin hot pepper with a purebred thin skin. So what we're saying here is that they are homozygous. All right, so we have homozygous dominant and we have the homozygous recessive. The dominant here is going to be the thick skin because what it says here, where T represents the allele for thick skin. So here they are defining the allele and common T, so capital T, the thick skin for, the, the allele for thick skin and common T, the allele which represents thin skin. Our task State the genotype of a parent. The genotype of a parent, we have realized that the parent, thick skin, is homozygous dominant. So that's going to be capital T, capital T for the genotype. For the other parent that has homozygous recessive, and little t represent the recessive trait, that's going to be common T, common T. So there we have the genotype for both parents. Now we are expected to cross. It says, stay the genotype of the offspring of this cross. Show all working. Interestingly, CXC, I don't know if you can tell me. If this were biology or HSB, it would, be, it would have been between four to six marks. But for agriculture, it is two marks. Can somebody explain to me in the comment why it is two marks for agriculture? However, it would have been four or six marks for biology or human and social biology one might say um the alleles were already defined of course the alleles were defined let t be the dominant allele for thick and common t be the recessive allele for thin so that was noted above and one might say 
the um, parental phenotype, the parental genotype, wow, was already noted. Just let me make a correction. Here you would have observed, here I have phenotype, but it should have been actually genotype. So just let me correct this very quickly. All right, great. So here what we what we did is as we would have solved it for bio or HSB, we defined the alleles over here. The alleles are all defined there. And then we are writing or identifying, just let me use our red ink here. So the alleles are defined over here. Then we do our parental phenotype, thick skin, thin skin. That was already stated. So probably you're not getting the mark for that as you would have gotten for by an HSB. The genotype here, it was already stated up top. So probably they have taken off those three marks or two marks. So probably that's why, let us see if we can figure out why, why we're not at four. Instead, we're at two. And then the gametes, you would have to separate them for uh, CXE to show the gamete. Capital T, capital T, space, capital T, um, common T, common T, space. And then we would have random fertilization or some persons might say the cross. To do the cross, what we would have done is just to construct a Punnett square. And a Punnett square is just simply a rectangle like that with two vertical lines and of course two horizontal lines. And then we are going to begin the cross. So what we have done is to move this T here, and then we would have moved this T here, and then we want, and this is for simplicity, that one there, and then we would have moved that one there. I'm going to erase. So having placed those in our opponent square, it's time for us to cross. Now to do the cross, what we would have done, we would have moved this T down and moved that one across. Move this one down, and we would have moved this one across. And we continue just like that, that one down and this one across, that one down and this one across. And then we end up with what we have as all offspring being heterozygous. Heterozygous. So here it was, homo, homozygous. Here it is heterozygous. You are seeing big T, little t. Now, the fact that there was a dominant allele we have to appreciate this to be the inheritance of dominance. And what the law says, once the dominant allele, which is a capital T here, is expressed in the genotype, then the phenotype will be that of the dominant allele. So we are asked, <coughs> we were asked to identify the genotype. So the genotype, um, say the genotype of the offspring. So these are what we refer to as the F1 generation. First filial generation. So the offsprings, the genotype of the offspring would be all these things here in the box. All these here, these are our possible offsprings. So here you'd note that there's a possibility that all the offspring coming from such an interaction would have a genotype of capital T, common T. Here I would have noted them in the box. Let me just erase so we can continue further um, explanation. I do hope that you would have understood that bit. Uh, please be reminded that uh, I would have done the genetic diagram for these. If you go to any of my bio video on genetics, you would have realized that I would have worked them out for both biology and HSB. And it is uh, pretty much the same thing, whichever subject it is. Let's move on. Then we are tasked. It says here, determine how many of the offspring will have a thin skin phenotype and how many will have a thick skin? So thick skin is what you can feel or detect. That's a phenotype. And the genotype is the genetic makeup. And for our subjects, we denote them using letters. Letters that you define, you can determine which one you're going to be using. So here from what we would have seen from the interaction, the cross, cross in the table, we realize that all the offspring will have thick skin based on the rule. The rule says once the dominant allele, which is our capital T, is expressed, then the phenotype will represent whatever trait the capital, uh, the, the dominant allele express. So the dominant allele here represents thick skin pepper. So of course, all your peppers are going to have thick skin. So all the offspring will have a thick phenotype or a thick skin phenotype. Probably could correct that bit. All the offspring will have a thick skin phenotype. All right? And then none of the offspring will have a thin skin. 
all right because the dominant allele is expressed so of course the offspring is going to assume the characteristic of a dominant allele now we're asked some vegetable seeds are some vegetable seeds that are sold in agricultural shop have been produced by commercial seed producing companies using genetic engineering we are tasked to suggest one benefit farmers may get from growing genetically engineered crops now the benefits are enormous it's a whole lot so it asks for one here but i did give a couple because you are studying and you might need just to know others so one thing we're sure about the crops there's a possibility that they will grow faster if that is a trait we're looking for you might have faster maturity in the fruit if that's a trait that we're looking for we might have improved taste of a fruit if that's a desired trait we're going for or overall we're going to be having um in general an improved desired trait so whatever you're looking for if you're looking for a color with large leaf you are going to get large leaf if you're, if you're looking for a coconut tree would be coconut and um very short then you're talking about the maple right so genetically what we tend to do is to produce a plant that has favorable characteristic it could be something that you're going to be resistant to it's going to be resistant to insect pests uh anything there the scientists will make that decision what is it that we're looking for what is economical and make sure that it is modified so that that particular purpose or niche is realized thanks much for watching if you have any comment on this video, please leave it in the comments below. Please be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. Until we next meet, what good?